Hi YouTubers, welcome to the fourth installment in this video series on creating a chess game in Scratch in the Java programming language. Recall in the last video we introduced the Peace class and the most important aspect so far of the Peace class is that it has defined on it this abstract method called Calculate Legal Moves takes a given board uh, and for the given piece it will calculate that piece's legal moves. Now on piece obviously that makes no sense because piece is not instantiable. So what we're going to see is that for each concrete piece like a knight or a bishop or a queen or a rook or a pawn that we will override this calculate legal moves method and do what makes sense for each move. So let's jump right into that. Uh, actually, before I do that, in the last video I promised to uh, uh, sort of flesh Alliance out a little bit more. Let me show you what I want to do here. So in Alliance, what I want to do is I want to say that the two alliances that I have that make sense are white and black. And I mentioned that I was going to use an enum to define this. And um, so I took the liberty of sort of looking this up on the internet to put it into words. Um, but right, so before Java 5, if you ever wanted to do something like this, you wanted to sort of define these constants, uh, you would do something like what's shown here, right? You would define like an int and map int and, and map like winter to zero, spring to one, that kind of thing, and that's not type safe, right? Since since a season is just an int, you can pass in any other int where a season is required, right? So that's not type safe. Um, and that's the primary reason why I'm using an enum. You can also define, uh, the other main reason is that you can define behavior on an enum. It's just like a class. Anyway, if you want, you can sort of look up, you know, you can look up more about this um, on the Google Docs, or excuse me, on Oracle's uh, Java Docs, um, and on, on the benefits of enums and when to use them. But I think it's kind of obvious here that we really have two instances. Um, I chose an enum over a class because really there's only two constant instances that I want, white and black. And we'll see that we'll have some behavior defined on this uh, alliance later. But for now, it's, it's, it's good enough for me to just put in the two constants that we're going to have, white and black. Okay, so now we have this piece class. What I want to now do is I want to create a new class. The first piece that's going to have concrete behavior. So let's say public class knight extends piece. And the IDE is complaining here. So let's highlight the line and implement the method calculate legal moves. Voila. Uh, what is this complaining? There is no default constructor. Right, so I wonder if I can get the IDE to do that for me. I think I can. Create constructor matching super. Yep. Bam. That's awesome. So let's mark these final. Right, there we go. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so now here we go. We have the beginnings of a night. And so let's talk about how to calculate the legal moves for a knight. So here I have the Wikipedia entry for a chess knight and I want you to focus on this chessboard right here and I think it will become apparent what our algorithm is going to be to calculate the legal moves for a given knight, right? So this black knight here on d4, right, um, has the following legal moves, uh, b5, c6, e6, f5, f3, e2, c2, b3, right? I think I got them all there. Right and B five, um, right. So, so really, for the, the to calculate a legal move, to calculate the legal moves for a knight, 
we can think in terms of the tile that we defined. We can say that our current position, right, is some number, right? So like if, if, if we were to map the chessboard to tile numbers, it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16, 24, 32, 33, 34, 35. Hopefully I got that right. Um, so tile number 35, right? And if we were to, for example, say 35 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? That's uh, 29. Then that is a candidate legal move, right? That would be a candidate legal move for my current position. So what we can see is that minus six positions from my current location is one possible um, legal move for the night. It's not necessarily a legal move because that slot may be occupied um, either by a friendly piece or it may be that it's sort of out of bounds, if you will, right? That it's sort of an, it's an illegal square. It, it, you know, you can imagine minus six if my knight were defined here on b8 would not make any sense. Okay, so I'm going to come back here to my knight class. I already know what all of these uh, candidate slots are. I've worked them out, and I encourage you to do it on your own. Uh, but here, I will go ahead and um, include them here as a private final static int candidate move coordinates is equal to and minus 17 minus 15 minus 10 minus 6 6 10 15 17 notice the symmetry there right so, and that maps to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can come back here and see that indeed, you know, in, the, in a perfect world, a knight at most is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 legal moves, right? So when considering the legal moves for a given knight, there are eight candidate um, offsets, if you will, from our current location that we need to consider, okay? And I might actually break this uh, video up into to two pieces. We'll see how it goes. It, it, it may be a lot to cover um, the implementation, but uh, let's see if we let's see how far we can get. Okay. So let's come here now, and I know that I'm going to loop through all of these um, sort of candidate locations, right? These candidate offsets. So let's say for int current candidate in candidate move coordinates, right? I'm going to loop through these. And there's going to be some exceptions, but let's, let's not worry about that yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'm going to declare, declare a variable outside of this loop, and I'm going to say int candidate destination coordinate right. sorry about that and I'm going to say candidate destination coordinate is equal to this dot piece position plus current candidate right so basically applying the offset whether it's positive or negative to the current position okay and um, that's going to uh, then have a, a value. And so the easy thing to do is it's going to be, the condition is going to be something to the effect of if, um, and let's just put, uh, let's put true here for now, but let's think about this. It's going to be something to the effect of if this um, is a valid tile coordinate, right? C coming back to our picture here if we're not if we don't go out of bounds right if we don't go out of bounds then we want to say final tile candidate destination tile 
is equal to, and we want to get the tile of the board of that candidate destination coordinate. So we're going to say something like board.getTile and give it the candidate destination coordinate. The candidate destination coordinate. Yep. Okay, a lot of things are undefined here. Let's fix that on the fly. Um, right, and now that we have that tile, right, we want to say if that candidate destination tile is not occupied, let's get the easy one out of the way first, if it's not occupied, then we're going to add that to one of our legal move location. So let's come out here and say list of move legal moves is equal to new array list. Right? This is going to be used to capture our legal moves. Let's say that that's final. Right? That can be final. Um, so here we'll say legal moves dot add and it's going to be you know we're going to add a new legal move here and we haven't really if you look at our move class it's empty so let's just for now say new we will stub this out new move okay and we're going to have to give this we're going to have to sort of provide some parameters to uh, the move uh, and, and we might do that in a subsequent video here we'll see how far we can get. So, so we've seen. Let's let's sort of walk through this for each one of our candidate legal moves, right? Like the, in the example we saw that I did uh, manually, the candidate was minus six. We go through each one of them. We apply the offset um, to a member field, a, a local, a variable, if you will. Um, and, and we call that variable candidate destination coordinate. We apply that offset, right? That's what that variable is going to take on that value. So whatever your current piece position is plus that offset. In our case, it was minus 6. So minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 29. Then um, we apply it. And then we go if um, tile 29 is valid, in our, in our case it will be, then we come in here and go if um, it's not occupied, then add that legal move, right? If it is occupied, else, if it is occupied, then we need to get the piece at that location. Right? And we need to get the alliance of that piece uh, Oh, I didn't write a getter met method for that yet. So let's come over to piece and let's create that getter method. So public alliance get piece alliance return this dot piece alliance okay so now we're gonna say piece at destination dot get piece alliance now we have the alliance of that piece and this is where it gets interesting we say if this Piece alliance, the current piece, the knights, the knight that we're examining, if that piece's piece alliance is not equal to the piece alliance of the piece that's at our destination tile, then we know that that is going to be an enemy piece. So we're going to say legal moves dot add and this is going to be a different type of move but again at this point we'll sort of stub it out 
Okay, that's not too bad, right? So, let's come in, clean this up a little bit, and let's, right, it's just a matter of preference, I don't like my spacing to, I don't like having that much space between my code, so, um, right, so now that we've done that, then all we need to do, lastly, all we need to do here is to say legal, um, let's say immutable list dot copy of our legal moves. Okay, a couple things that we're still getting compile errors on. So board doesn't have a method defined on it called get tile. Let's go ahead and do that. Right? We don't really know what that means yet, but so we haven't defined board, we will. But so let's say public tile get tile and final int tile coordinate. And let's just say return null for now. Right, this doesn't have to. Okay, so great. So we still need a method called is valid tile coordinate. Right. So um, why don't we? We'll look at that uh, in the next video. So let's just sort of um, let's go over what we've done. So we we mentioned that we had a list of candidate destinations for the night. Right, a fixed set um, based on these offsets, minus 17, minus 15, minus 10, minus 6, minus 6, or 6, 10, 15, and 17. These are offsets with respect to our current position that we're going to consider, right? And we consider them in this for loop. And um, we just sort of come in here and we say that the candidate destination coordinate is my current position plus the current candidate, right? then if that is a valid tile and it's not occupied, then uh, we're going to add sort of a non-attacking legal move there. Otherwise, if it is occupied, then we're going to get the alliance of the piece that is occupying that tile. And if the alliance of that piece is not equal to this current knight's alliance, then we're going to add an attacking move. And um, after we built those all up, we're going to return all of those legal moves. So we, we still have some work to do in this class, but I think this is a significant portion of it. Um, I'm going to stop here, and we will uh, pick up uh, in the next video.